June 6, 1892. Dear Martha, we rode the cotton wagon for what seemed like forever. Daniel, Ethel, and I were so tired of the gentle rocking of the wagon lulled us to sleep. A man's voice woke us up. He said, you must like cotton because this is the second time today you've been sleeping in my wagon. He smiled. I'm Joe. I said, thank you for helping us. He said, well, this is as far as I go. Where are you headed? I said, I'm not really sure. I don't know where my folks are. I got, we got separated, but I do know someone in St. Augustine, or at least she will be in St. Augustine sometime. She was with the wagon train. Joe said, if someone is looking for you, they'll probably stay on that main road. See this trail? He pointed to the path where the grass had been worn down. Follow that trail. You'll come on to a cabin at the spring, way down yonder. That's where Wanda Watson lives. Tell her Joe sent you. She'll treat you right. Joe climbed into the wagon. He said, it's not too much, but here's two carrots. They were going to be for my mules, but I'll get them something else. We thanked him for the carrots and we waved as he drove off. I said, Daniel, you don't have to come with me. Here's your carrot if you want to go off on your own. They're not very big, but they're better than nothing. He said, where else have I got to go? It's safer if we stick together. Besides, we're both Bodanes. Hearing him say that reminded me of Pap. I was glad that Daniel wanted to come with me. Traveling alone could be scary and dangerous, especially at night. And after all, Daniel is my cousin. We set off down the trail. Daniel said, Teddy, how'd you get a boy's name? I said, it's really Theodosa, but everyone calls me Teddy. While we walked, we told each other every, what, everything we could think of about our families. Daniel's mama died when he was young, so he doesn't remember much about her. His pap, Daniel Bodane, was a carpenter. He grew up in North Florida. He remembered going to a family reunion one time when he was a boy, but he never knew his relatives after that. Daniel was 11, going on 12, one year older than me. That made me remember my birthday. I'd completely forgotten that I was about to turn 11. I said, what day is it today? He said, I don't know, Thursday, Friday. I said, no, I mean, what calendar date? I tried to remember. Hadn't Dr. Winkleplex said something about June being two days away? He said, why? I said, because my birthday is June 4th, but I think it's past now. So much has happened, I forgot my own birthday. He said, how old are you? I said, I'm 11. I've been 11 for days and I didn't even know it. He said, happy birthday. That means we're both 11 for now. We found the cabin late this afternoon. A woman came out to see us. I said, Joe sent us. She looked at me in my dusty, dirty dress that was bundle and the bundle tied to a stick. She looked at Daniel, who looked like he hadn't seen the inside of a bathtub in weeks and wasn't too friendly with barbers either. Then she looked at Ethelbert. His head dropped and his tail was between his legs. She said, if Joe sent you, then you're in the right place. Do you like fried fish? Daniel and I said, yes, at the same time. She said, then what are you waiting for? Let's go fishing. Love, Teddy. June 7th, 1892. Dear Martha, Miss Wanda Watson is a whirlwind. She's the sun coming out on a cloudy day. She's a cool drink of water when you're hot and thirsty. She's an, as old as the earth, no kidding. She must be about 90 years old. Yesterday, right off the bat, she took us fishing in the spring by the cabin. We used bamboo poles like Pap and I did before. Daniel was handy with the fishing pole, I might say. Wanda, she doesn't like Miss Wanda, gave us slices of stale bread and we made dough balls for bait. Boy, do fish love dough balls. We sat on big flat rocks right at the edge of the spring. The sun was low in the sky. Wanda said, it's supper time, pull them in. And that's what we did. We caught lots and lots of fish. 
Every time we pulled one in, Daniel yelled a big woohoo and Wanda shouted yeehaw. Daniel and I were so busy, we didn't notice that Wanda had made a fire right there on the spring bank. She melted grease in the biggest skillet I'd ever seen. I bet she could have fried three dozen eggs in that thing. She made a big pot of grits and set them to boil. When Daniel and I had a pile of warm mouth perch, blue gill and trout, Wanda called, okay, Teddy, come clean your fish. Daniel, you keep fishing. Boys can eat a heap of fish. I said, I don't have a knife, Wanda. I thought she'd say, I'll clean them for you, but she didn't. She pulled the pocket knife out of her apron and handed it to me. That belonged to my son, Samuel. He cleaned many a fish with it. I'd watch Pap clean fish. It m couldn't be that hard. I said, I hope I do it right. I've seen my Pap do it. Wanda said, hunger is the best teacher there is. I took a deep breath and began cleaning. It really isn't hard. You just have to remember all the steps. Scales, head, belly, entrails, bloodline. Then they'd be ready to fry. I took the fish to Wanda in a bucket. I said, they're scaled, cleaned, and I buried the heads and guts. She was surprised. With you wearing that pink dress, I figured you a city girl that got herself lost. Now I'm thinking you're a country girl with a good head on her shoulders. Somebody has taught you right. Her face was the kindest, sweetest face I'd ever seen. Daniel came to help. He said, I caught eight more and I put them on a line. Wanda said, the two of you have some right handy skills. Wash your hands in the spring, dredge the fish in this corn mill, then fry them up nice and brown. By the time we got back from washing our hands, the grease was sizzling hot. We used a long fork to lay the fish in the skillet. Mm -mm. There is no better smell than frying fish. Frying fish you caught yourself. While we fried fish, Wanda mixed eggs and buttermilk in with the rest of the cornmeal and added some onions and green peppers. I said, what's that for? She said, I'm making us some hush puppies. You can't eat fried fish without hush puppies. By the time I dished up the grits and handed our plates with fish, my mouth was watering. Daniel's stomach was growling and Ethelbert was whining about, about to pester me to death. Wanda threw each of us a hush puppy. They practically melted in our mouths. They were so good. She said, see, see how you hushed? Even the puppy. We all laughed. Before we ate, Wanda said, let's thank the good Lord. Daniel and I bowed our heads. Wanda prayed nice and loud. Lord, help these two runaway children. Thank you for this food. Give us a night of rest and good weather. Amen. In my mind, I prayed and keep mama and pop safe wherever they may be. Love, Teddy. June 8th, 1892. Dear Martha, after supper, Wanda told us a story. Sit near the campfire, we were surrounded by twinkling, blinking fireflies. Sitting, Daniel and I reached to catch them in our hands. Wanda said, the firefly didn't always have that light, you know. Once upon a time, when he was just a simple beetle, each day he slept, but at night he flew down to the river and sat on the bank. There he cried because there was nothing special about him. Ah, me, the butterfly is beautiful, the ladybug has spots, the mantis prays, the centipede has 100 legs, and the cricket sings for all to hear. But there is nothing special about me. I'm just a beetle. No one takes notice of a simple beetle. In those days, the panther was the ruler of all creatures. All the animals came to him for advice because he was so wise. Not a night passed that wasn't visited by the black bear or the white-tailed deer, the grass snake, the pelican, or the eagle. One evening, when the firefly was crying by the river, the alligators came to the surface of the water to gossip. They took no notice of the firefly because he was just a simple beetle. The smallest alligator said, Tonight I will catch a catfish. I will lie at the bottom, and when the catfish swims close, I will catch him by his whiskers. The other alligators nodded their heads and said, Good, good. The middle-sized alligator said, Tonight I will eat a turtle. 
When she swims to the log, I will catch her by her leg. The other alligators nodded their heads and said, good. The largest alligator said, a catfish and a turtle might be a fine meal for you, but tonight I will dine on panther. The other alligator said, how can this be? Because they knew the panther was wise and fierce. The largest alligator said, I will lay quietly below the surface of the water. Only my eyes will be peeping above the water. When the panther comes to drink by moonlight at the water's edge, I will leap up and seize him by his tail. The other alligator said, we will watch to see what comes to pass. Now, the firefly, who was only a simple beetle, knew that someone had to warn the panther. If he had been a butterfly or a ladybug or a mantis or a centipede or a cricket, the alligators would have noticed him. But he was only a simple beetle, so he flew off unnoticed to warn the panther. The firefly flew up to the trees, up to the highest branch where the panther was meeting with the raccoon, the osprey, and the squirrel. He flew to the panther's ear and whispered, Great panther, tonight the largest alligator is laying a trap for you. When you go to the river to drink by moonlight, he will be hidden under the water. Only his eyes will be peeping above the water. When you bend to lap up the water, he will leap up and seize you by your tail. The panther said, Who is this who warns me? The firefly said, It is only I, a simple beetle. There is nothing special about me. I am not beautiful like the butterfly. I do not have spots nor 100 legs. And alas, I do not sing. The panther said, Why do you envy what others have? I will reward you with something all your own. And from that moment on, you will blink a twinkly light early in the evening to remind all the creatures that you saved the life of the great panther. And as for the alligator, starting tonight, his eyes will shine and glow as a warning to all that he is hiding with just his eyes peeping above the water. And that is how the firefly got his light. Wanda Wilson is the best storyteller in the world. Love, Teddy.